In this presentation we will discuss about the low visibility operations which will cover the approach below CAT-1 landing minima and departures in low visibility. Low visibility operations are critically important for airlines and airport operators. They enable aircraft to land and take off in adverse weather conditions, preventing diversions to other airports. This ensures safe operations in poor visibility, maintains the airline schedule, and contributes to overall profitability. Landing in low visibility is perhaps one of the most exciting ways to operate an aircraft but is certainly the most demanding. Such progress in civil aviation was made possible by huge improvements in aircraft automatic control systems over the last 30 years, coupled with stringent requirements for airfield equipment and crew qualification. In Category 3 landing, pilots see the runway lights only few seconds before touchdown, therefore there is no margin for error. The basis for Category 2 or 3 landing operations, such as aircraft certification or airline operational demonstration, ensures a high level of safety. Moreover, approach success rate in actual inline services is now nearly 100%. Caravelle of Air and Tur became the first aircraft in the history of civil aviation to land in actual Category 3 conditions during a commercial flight between Lyon to Paris. This was possible because of the successful results of the test automatic landing system. Currently, aircraft are certified both with fail passive where decision height is limited to 50 feet and fail operational landing systems. Operational Preparedness our goal is to be well prepared for all types of weather, ensuring smooth airport operations even in low visibility conditions, which can minimize disruptions and delays, economic efficiency. We aim to use low visibility procedures to reduce operational costs, prevent costly diversions, and make the best use of airport resources, ultimately improving the financial health of our operations. Safety Awareness we're committed to raising awareness about safe airport operations during poor visibility and how our procedures play a crucial role in keeping everyone safe, from staff to passengers and our aviation partners. Understanding LVP, our objective is to ensure that all relevant personnel fully understand low visibility procedures, their responsibilities, the equipment they use, and how to make informed decisions when dealing with challenging weather conditions. All weather operations deals with any surface movement, takeoff, departure, approach or landing in conditions where visual reference is limited by weather conditions. All weather operations includes Category 1, 2, 3 instrument approaches, low visibility takeoff taxi during visibility conditions below Category I minima. The procedures for air navigation services Air traffic management require the implementation of specific procedures for low visibility operations whenever weather conditions make it difficult for the control tower to visually monitor all or part of the maneuvering area. These procedures are essential to ensure safe and efficient aircraft movements when visibility is limited. When a flight is operated in low visibility we need to protect the flight for that, aerodrome operating minima are established. Air crew should be certified for low visibility operations, aircraft should be capable of such operations and aerodrome should have has approved low visibility operations. We further restrict airplane operations at an aerodrome by limiting these operations in specified weather conditions. This is to ensure the desired level of safety during such conditions. Low visibility procedures are airport-specific procedures which are implemented during poor visibility to safeguard aircraft operations and increasing the protection from incursion or collisions. What comes under LVP? Low visibility procedures covers airport operations below 550 meter of visibility, which in LUDs, ILS Category 2, 3 landing, and low visibility takeoffs. We will discuss the concepts and the terms used in this lecture for better understanding. Category 1 approach is precision instrument approach and landing with decision height not lower than 200 feet and a runway visual range not less than 550 meters. Aircraft carrying Category 1 approach will descend to decision height. Decision height is protection for aircraft. If pilot has visual contact at this height then he will continue below this height for landing otherwise he will climb and carry out the missed approach procedure. 
If the airport infrastructure allows and aircraft crew are certified they can operate below Category 1 minima. A Category 2 approach is a precision instrument approach and landing, with decision height lower than 200 feet but not less than 100 feet, and a runway visual range not less than 300 meter. A Category 3 approach is a precision instrument approach and landing, with decision height lower than 100 feet and a runway visual range less than 300 meters. In Category 2 and 3 regulations, two different heights are defined, decision height and alert height. Decision height is a specified point in space at which a pilot must make an operational decision. The pilot must decide if the visual references adequate to safely continue the approach have been established. If the visual references have not been established, a go-around must be executed. In Category 2 operations, decision height is always limited to 100 feet. In Category 3 operations, the decision height is lower than 100 feet typically equal to 50 feet for a fail-passive automatic landing system and 15 to 20 feet for a fail-operational automatic landing system. Whether minima has been established to provide sufficient visual references at decision height, pilots should be able to see at least three light segment of the centerline of the approach lights or runway centerline or touchdown zone lights or runway edge lights. Sufficient visual references at decision height permit a manual landing or otherwise a missed approach to be executed. For CAT-3 operations with a fail operational landing system, there is a critical alert height. Above the alert height, if there's a system failure, the pilot must go around, abort the landing. Below the alert height, the approach will continue unless an autoland warning is triggered. If the warning occurs, the pilot will initiate a missed approach for safety. Radio altimeter area is defined area in approach path at 300 meters from the runway threshold and extending 60 meters on both sides of the extended runway centerline. This area is a critical zone for the radio altimeter's altitude measurements during the final stages of the approach and landing. The purpose of this designated area is to ensure that the radio altimeter can accurately measure the aircraft's altitude above the ground as it approaches and crosses the runway threshold. The main objective of Category 2 operations is to provide a level of safety equivalent to other operations, but in more adverse weather conditions and lower visibility, the desired level of safety is achieved through airborne equipment. Non-visual aids instrument landing system, visual aids runway marks, lighting systems, flight crew training, flight crew procedures, ATC procedures, aircraft maintenance, airfield maintenance, criteria for obstacle clearance. The main objective of Category 3 operations is to provide a level of safety equivalent to other operations but in the most adverse weather conditions and associated visibility. Category 3 weather minima do not provide sufficient visual references to allow a manual landing to be made. Therefore an automatic landing system is mandatory to perform Category 3 operations. Its reliability must be sufficient to control the aircraft to touchdown and through rollout to a safe taxi. Automatic landing system is a sophisticated technology that automates the aircraft's approach and landing. It ensures a safe and precise landing, especially in challenging weather conditions. While not exclusive to Category 3 operations, automatic landing system is mandatory for Category 3, which deals with very low visibility. It offers enhanced safety and precision by reducing the reliance on visual cues during landing. An airport operator shall not use an airfield for CAT-2 or CAT-3 operations unless it is approved for such operations by the state in which the airfield is located. Airfield requirements are contained in the ICAO document, All Weather Operations Manual, which refers to standards and recommendations from ICAO Annex 10 First Volume, ILS, and ICAO Annex 14, Aerodrome. Now we will understand the typical CAT-2 or CAT-3 airfield requirements. Runway length, there is no specific requirement concerning runway length for an aerodrome to be CAT-2 or 3 approved. The runway length is only an operational limitation. The runway width should be normally not less than 45 meters. 
Runway slope, for Category 2 and 3 ILS approach, it is recommended that for the first and the last quarter of the length of the runway the slope does not exceed 0.8%. To permit the use of the automatic landing system, ICAO also recommends that slope changes must be avoided or, when it is not possible, kept to a maximum of 2% per 30 meter in the area located just before the threshold. For Category 2 and 3 ILS approach, it is recommended that no fixed object, other than frangible visual aids, are installed on a runway strip within 60 meters of the centerline. During landing, no mobile objects are permitted in the same area. A taxi holding position is established at each intersection of a taxiway and the runway. The distance between the holding position and the centerline of the runway is not less than 90 meters. Now we will understand the visual aids requirements. Runway threshold marking should be provided where the code number is 3 or 4 and the runway is intended for use by international commercial air transport. Runway center line markings for category 2 or 3 operations. The runway center line marks must have a width not less than 0.90 meters. Touchdown zone marks are required for all precision approaches. They are painted in the touchdown zone, the zone beginning at the threshold and extending to a distance of 900 meters. The taxi holding positions must be as shown in pattern A for the category 1 and pattern B for the category 2 or 3. Cat 2 or 3 signs are also placed on either edge of the taxiway at the holding position and the sign Cat 3 must be accompanied with flashing lights. These markings or signs are an efficient means to avoid aircraft intruding into the obstacle-free zone or in the critical-slash-sensitive area. Runway lights on runways intended for use by CAT 2 or 3 operations consist of high-intensity threshold lights, runway end lights, runway touchdown zone lights, runway edge lights, runway centerline lights. Runway edge lights are placed along the full length of the runway in two parallel rows equidistant from the centerline, with a distance of no more than 3 meter to the runway edge. These lights are uniformly spaced at intervals of no more than 60 meters and may be omitted at the intersections. The lights are fixed lights showing variable white. Threshold lights are placed in a row at right angles to the runway axis outside the runway with a distance of no more than 3 meters to the threshold. The lights are fixed unidirectional lights showing green, uniformly spaced at intervals of no more than 3 meters. Runway centerline lights are a specific requirement for Category 2 or 3 approaches. They are located along the centerline of the runway, with a longitudinal spacing of 7.5 or 15 or 30 meters for Category 2 and only 7.5 or 15 meters for Category 3. These lights are fixed lights showing variable white from the threshold to the point 900 meters from the runway end. Alternate red and variable white from the point 900 to the 300 meters from the runway end. Red 300 meter from runway end. Touchdown zone lights are a specific requirement for Category 2 or 3 approaches. They extend from the threshold for a longitudinal distance of 900 meter. The pattern is formed by pairs of barrettes containing at least three lights. Lights inside each barrette are fixed, unidirectional lights showing variable white. Each barrette must be not less than 3 meter and no more than 4.5 meter in length. The lateral spacing between the lights is not less than 18 meters and no more than 22.5 meters. The longitudinal spacing between pairs of barrettes is 60 or 30 meters, but it is recommended to have a spacing of 30 meter for low minima. Runway end lights are placed in a row at right angles to the runway axis, outside the runway with a distance of no more than 3 meters to the runway end. The lights are fixed unidirectional lights showing red, with a minimum number of six lights. ICAO also recommends a spacing between the lights of no more than six meters for runways intended for use by CAT-3 approaches. Taxiway edge lights are not a specific CAT-2 or 3 requirement, but provide efficient visual aid during low visibility operations. The lights are fixed lights showing blue. For example, when there is a bend, the spacing is reduced to help the crew have a better view of the radius.
Taxiway centerline lights have to be installed OT airports intended for use by operations with RVR 400 meter or less. The lateral spacing between lights must not exceed 15 meter at the proximity of a curve spacing equal to or less than 7.5 meter. The lights are fixed green lights, but from the beginning of the taxiway to the perimeter of the ILS critical area sensitive area or the lower edge of the inner transitional surface, the lights are alternately showing green yellow. On exit taxiways, alternate green and yellow from beginning near runway center line to the perimeter of ILS critical, sensitive area or lower edge of inner transitional surface, whichever is farthest, thereafter all lights are green. Stop bars are placed at each taxi holding position when the runway is intended for use at an RVR less than 400 meter and are specially required for all CAT 3 approaches. The lights of the stop bars show red and are spaced at intervals of 3 meter. These stop bars are an efficient means to avoid aircraft intrusion into the obstacle free zone or into the critical sensitive area during approaches in very low visibility conditions. Approach light system is mandatory for CAT 2 operations, only optional for CAT 3 operations. It consists of a row of lights on the extended centerline of the runway extending over a distance of 300 meter from the threshold. In addition, the system has two side rows of lights, extending 270 meter from the threshold, and two crossbars, one at 150 meter and one at 300 meter from the threshold. Due to the very low visibility in CAT 2 and 3 operations, each airfield must meet stringent criteria concerning obstacle clearance to avoid any aircraft on, approach, landing or go-around touching obstacles on the ground. The basis of those criteria are fully included in ICAO Annex 14 and PANS OPS Doc 8168 and in other national documents. Two important concepts are often mentioned in the regulations, the obstacle-free zone and the obstacle clearance height. Obstacle clearance height. The lowest altitude is the lowest height above the elevation of the relevant runway threshold or above the aerodrome elevation as applicable, used in establishing compliance with appropriate obstacle clearance criteria. The minimum decision height for CAT 2 is always equal to or higher than any obstacle clearance height mentioned in the aerodrome chart. Obstacle free zone the airspace above the inner approach surface, inner transitional surfaces, and balked landing surfaces and that portion of the strip bounded by these surfaces, which is not penetrated by any fixed obstacle other than a low mass and frangibly mounted and required for air transportation purposes. The ILS installation must conform to the appropriate specifications contained in ICAO Annex 10. There are three categories of ILS, providing guidance down to a height higher or equal to 200 feet for CAT 1, 50 feet for CAT 2, runway surface, and along the runway for CAT 3. In CAT 2 and 3 approaches, the ILS beams must be protected from unacceptable disturbance. For this purpose, two kinds of protection area are defined the critical area and the, the sensitive area. Air traffic control protects the ILS critical areas when arriving aircraft are inside the outer marker orphanal approach fix on an ILS approach, and the reported ceiling is less than 800 feet or visibility is less than 2 miles. Automated RVR assessment reporting system is mandatory for CAT 2-3 operations. RVR equipment are installed at position near runway at touchdown mid-end. During operations, the pilot must know the RVR value related to the touchdown. It is not necessary to give the other values mid, stop end unless these values are lower than the touchdown report or there is special mention in the ATC procedures. Autoland systems are normally designated fail operational or fail passive. A fail operational system must have at least two autopilots engaged for the approach. The failure of one autopilot will still allow an autoland to be carried out. For a fail passive automatic landing system the pilot assumes control of the aircraft after a failure. Thus in fail operational the landing is not completed automatically. Airfield operating minima, established in accordance with airport authority published on approach charts, operators minima, lowest minima that an operator is allowed to use at specified airfield, following approval from its operational authority, crew minima, 
lowest minima that the crew is authorized to operate, depending on the crew qualification, aircraft minima, lowest minima which have been demonstrated during aircraft certification, CAT 2 or 3 operations, these minima are DHRVR. Objectives of low visibility procedures, protect active runways against incursions, preserve the accuracy of radio navigation aids, support the efficient flow of aircraft, reduce the possibility of conflicts between the aircraft, maintain situational awareness by ATC, apron management, vehicular control. Low visibility operations is approach and landing operations in RVR less than 550 meter and or with ejection height less than 200 feet or takeoff operations in RVR less than 550 meter. Low visibility procedures are specific procedures applied at an aerodrome for the purpose of ensuring safe operations during low visibility operations. Low visibility procedures are established to support the following aircraft flight operations. Departure operations in RVR condition less than a value of 550 meter, CAT 2-3 approach and landing operations. Safeguarding procedures are the mandatory actions to prepare airport for low visibility procedures. They include inspection of aerodrome ground lighting, termination of all work in progress and removal of all equipment material from localizer and glide path critical sensitive area and the maneuvering area. Restrictions on the movement of vehicles on the maneuvering area and apron. Safeguarding procedures shall be initiated when the runway visual range is less than 1,200 meter or visibility is forecast to deteriorate to 800 meter or less, and or the cloud ceiling is 400 feet and forecast to fall to 200 feet or less. On the receipt of forecast for low visibility or cloud ceiling, the tower controller will inform ATC supervisor officer, communication navigation supervisor, apron control, aerodrome operational control center, airport rescue fire fighting services, airlines, security other agencies. Apron control will inform tower controller that all the concerned agencies have completed their necessary actions. Safeguarding procedure is completed airport is safeguarded for low visibility operation. Low visibility procedures shall be implemented when either touchdown zone, mid or end RVR is less than 800 meter or cloud ceiling is less than 200 feet, safeguarding procedures have been completed and the airport safeguarded, ILS CAT 1 operations will continue till touchdown RVR is not less than 550 meter. LVP shall be implemented when visibility falls below 550 meter or cloud ceiling below 200 feet. Include low visibility procedures in force in ATIS broadcast. ATC may terminate LVP when meteorological conditions improve and RVR are 800 meter or more or the cloud ceiling is 200 feet or higher and trend is for improvement. Thank <laughs> you.